Okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Just waiting to go live with Bray. Just need to add them in here. Hello. Hi. How, How are, are you? you? Pretty good. Awesome. My name's Marlena. I work as a digital content manager with Frey, Hi. and we are so excited to be going live with you. Me too. I really haven't done this much before, so I'm kind of excited. I am as well. I'm also based in Chicago. Oh, um, yeah. Yes, and so I'm excited to be talking to a fellow Chicago gal. Awesome. It's awesome. cold there now. <laughs> it's it's cold, but there's a somewhat blue sky, so we're rolling with it. Nice. Um, yeah, so I want to introduce just like the Frey followers, which is how amazing you are and how much you've accomplished. So <laughs> do you want to start with a little introduction about yourself? Uh, sure. My name's Morgan Bryan. I'm from St. Simons Island, Georgia. And like you said, I live in Chicago now. Um, I play for the Chicago Red Stars and I just joined the Frey team and yeah, I've played soccer my whole life and have been a lot of places and had a lot of success with a lot of great teams. Incredible. Um, it's so cool to be talking with someone who has done such epic, epic things. <laughs> um, let's start with skincare, if you wouldn't mind. So let's talk about your routine, um, what you do every day in terms of your skin. Yeah, well, it's obviously really important because, you know, we sweat a lot. So I think, you know, depending on what environments we're in and where we're playing and all of that kind of stuff, it kind of changes because uh, the skin obviously needs different things at different times. But um, for me, like the basically what I do every day for sure is when I go out to the soccer field, I always wear sunscreen. Um, and so the moisturizer sunscreen that Frey has has been great. It also doesn't get into my eyes which yeah that is perfect because <laughs> every time I've worn sunscreen before that it always gets into my eyes and stings it and I have to try and get it out with water so that's <laughs> been great um and then I always wash my face uh right after I train or sweat um and to make sure it's all you know clean and getting all the sweat and everything off of it and then at night I always use a moisturizer um, those are my definitely three things. And then I use mask every once in a while. But for me, those are the three staples and things that I, I can't really not do every day. Um, yeah, my course. face and my skin. Yeah, of course. So um, you are referring to the one, two, three fray set, which is purify me, which is our cleanser, protect me, which is our sunscreen and revive me, which is our serum. It's yeah. our one, two, three fray set. That's kind of been the originals with us. Um, so I'm so excited that you love them just as much yeah. as we do. Yeah, it's the perfect set, especially if you're a beginner and trying to take care of your skin. It's really easy and simple to use. And like you said, there's only three steps. And for me, I, I use those as my daily routine. Yeah, I've been using them since I've been with the team since June of 2018. So they are my ride or die skincare as <laughs> yeah. well. Um, do you, by chance, have one of your favorite Frey products on you if you wanted to show it to us? Or if not, we can just talk it through whatever is easier for you. I do, but they're in the other room. But I could just, right now I have the Frey, um, it's the moisturizer, but the tinted moisturizer, I have it on. So yeah. I don't know if that helps, but um, totally. yeah, I have it on. I don't have it with me right here, but um, it's totally fine. Yeah, No, I do have it on my face right now. Yeah, so Glow Me is our tinted moisturizer. It is 15 SPF, um, which people love. My like favorite fray trick is mixing Protect Me with Glow Me. I think it it's like a better SPF combo and a better glow combo. It's my absolute fave. And one of my friends, also ambassador, will mix Revive Me and Glow Me. These are like our fray secrets that we <laughs> come up with. So oh, I just always cool. like sharing that with people. That's cool. I'll have to try that. Yeah. Um, do you have any mixtures that you like to make mix with either Frey products or other skincare products? Um, 
I just got the new pro like two new products. And so for me, the past month, I've really just used the one, two, three fray set. And, yeah. you know, I, I haven't really mixed any of those because I use them at all different times, totally. um, you know, especially with the one, two, three fray set. So I haven't tried that. But now that you told me about it, I'm going to try it. Yeah, you'll have to let us know if you like it. It's for sure. It's kind of what I do every day. Um, I like do like a little dollop of each and I just the whole thing. Ooh, that light was a little funky. Anyway, um, okay, well, if Frey could create any kind of dream product for you, especially being such an incredible athlete, what would you say? That's a great question. Um, well, something that comes off my head is I really want to try the mask. Yes. Um, I haven't gotten to try that yet, but that is something I've heard glowing reviews about, and people love it. And I think especially for professional athletes or just women in general who sweat a lot I think it's really important to kind of detox your face and all of your pores and everything yeah. so for me that's something I really want to try um in the next few weeks so I would have to say that but that's a hard one if I wanted to make up a product I don't know the pressure's on but also phrase always crowdsourcing and so like genuinely from the bottom of my heart like maybe they'll make it yeah like, you never know <laughs> True. Well, hmm, I'll have to come up with something. You can think about it. Yeah, it's like a no pressure for right now. But I will tell it. you that Detox Me is by far my favorite product of the whole line. I've used it as a spot treatment all the time. Sometimes I'll even put it on before the shower. And then the steam, like, really works it into my pores. Highly suggest that. Wow. You have a lot of good pointers. These are good. I need to write these down. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll send you an email. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Please send me an email. <laughs> Um, no, but I, I do detox me is like the, my, my opinion, the best one. Right. It's yeah. The, I feel like you're greatest. not the only one. I feel like I've heard that from a lot of people who use it and just comments and reviews and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's a great, great product. Yeah. Um, but let's talk a bit more about soccer and your fitness journey. Um, why were you always so passionate about soccer? That's a good question. I actually played basketball and softball and soccer growing up in high school. And so I played all the sports. Um, and I actually really loved basketball. And I love the fact that it was very fast paced, a lot of, you know, scoring and with soccer, sometimes it's just a little different. It's not as much scoring, but uh, sometimes and then so for me, I think soccer, I chose at the beginning, because it's actually I feel like for me, it was harder to master than say a basketball or a softball and you know it's with your feet and something that's really foreign um, and you have to put a lot of time and energy into it to get really good at it and so I've always been really competitive and you know something like that is I was what I wanted to do and um, in trying to challenge myself every single day I stepped on to the field or court or anything like that so I chose soccer and I guess it helped that I was probably the best at the soccer than I was at the other sports so it was kind of easy. That's awesome. Um, why don't you tell us a bit more about your team that you're playing with right now? Um, which one? The Red the Stars? Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Chicago Red Stars. So I have been in Chicago now for, uh, let's see, three years now. And I got traded from the Houston Dash. And so I was in Houston before. I went to France for six months to play. And then I came back to Chicago. Uh, Chicago is now home to my husband and I, and uh, I love the city. It's a great team. It's I think Chicago Red Stars is the most uh, the winningest franchise in in the history of women's soccer, women's professional soccer, and so it has a deep history. and uh, It's a great team and a great organization, and something that I I love playing for the Red Stars. Awesome! I'd yeah. love to come to a game or something. You should. I, I love this city. I'm. It's obsessed with it. It's yeah. the best. It's great um, in the in the nice warm months. It's like the best. Yeah. <laughs> like June to September, except it was seventies in November the first week. So maybe June to November, I guess. Right. Um, I'm gonna keep getting pushed back on both. <laughs> yeah. I hope it's a short winter, but we'll see. Time will tell. We will see. Um can you share some uh some tips for positive teamwork with us? Sure. I mean, I think the best things about teamwork and like you said, is, is being positive. Um, yeah. For me, 
that's the the best teammates I've ever had have been the most positive and encouraging and motivating people around you. And I think great leaders and on teams that have great chemistry are always super positive and put the team first. Um, you know, it's always about other people and being selfless rather than thinking about yourself. And, um, you know, I, I've been fortunate to be on some really, really good teams and some great team chemistry. And I feel like those teams have always had a lot of selfless people and people who are always wanting the, you know, the best for the team, no matter if it kind of means to put yourself down first and, and always put the, the best interests in, in for the other teammates. And I think that's like kind of the crux of, of a good team and, and positive teamwork. And, and I think is being selfless is, is the number one. I, I love that and totally agree. I think that it's always the team and putting Which yourself thing to do sometimes though. second, but that's I, okay. It's for the good of the team. It is. It is. Um, tell, I feel like you are probably a pro in terms of mindset. So maybe if you could talk a bit about that, that'd be really helpful. Gosh, mindset in what way? Staying positive and um, passionate about, you know, doing something really tough every single day, but still being really excited and wanting to get out of bed and getting it done. Yeah, I think it's important also to realize that it's not every day that my mindset is amazing and I think it's you know there's some days when it's the toughest parts of the job is getting up and you know you don't want to work out or you don't yeah. want to do certain things but you have to push through it and know that there are these days you're going to have that you're just going to have to get it done um, but I think for me the mindset has been the most important thing in my journey of being a professional athlete I think it's probably 98 percent of the job um, you know, obviously there's a lot of talent involved, but once you get to the highest level, mindset becomes the biggest and most important thing. And I think that for me, it's always been about controlling what you can control. And I feel like it's always been my best motto and to myself is, you know, just focus on the controllables and everything else you can't worry about because, you know, if I, I show up to the field and I do my best every single day, that's, that's pretty much the only thing in my control. <laughs> And everything else outside of it has to fall where it falls. And so I feel like for me, that's kind of where I've, you know, been in my mindset the past, what, 20, 23 <laughs> years. <laughs> totally. And <laughs> thing I've had to grow into, you know, it's, it's something that you have to mature into and, and start to realize as you get older. And I think when you're younger, you don't realize how important mindset is. And so it's definitely something I've had to grow into. For sure. And I find it to be really refreshing that, you know, you can be honest and say, sometimes it's really hard. And sometimes it's just not what I want to like, get up and start working out or whatever that is for you. But yeah, no, um, <laughs> I find that to be really motivating, honestly, just to hear that. Yeah. So I really, I really appreciate your honesty, like yeah. from the bottom of my heart. Um, can you tell us a bit more about your experience of winning um, the World Cup, not just once, but twice? <laughs> yeah, so I feel like I get this question a lot and it's really hard to put in words, uh, you know, especially because uh, after winning two, it's, it's kind of accumulation of eight years and in the making and then also, you know, 23, because that's how long you've been playing soccer for. And, you know, you dream about this as a kid to, to be at the highest level and winning world cups. And it's something that you dream about, you know, you don't think it's ever going to actually happen. And then until you're in the, the shoes of yourself doing it. And so I think, you know, it's been an amazing journey. I've learned so much about myself as a person and, you know, through it all and obviously had success. And, you know, the 2015 World Cup was probably the, the coolest experience of my soccer career. We played so close to home in Canada and every single game was seas of red, white and blue and just, you know, screaming our names and, and so behind us. And we just felt like it was kind of a you know, a new decade of, of playing and, and soccer. And we hadn't won the World Cup in a long time. And and so it was amazing for us to finally win a World Cup after I think it was 15 years. So a long time. And so it was, it was pretty awesome to be able to come full circle with all the players that had come before us. And, you know, it had been so successful to, to do that right in our backyard in Canada was pretty amazing. And obviously to have all my family and friends there both times is makes it all worthwhile. 
I remember being in school and you guys won and it was so cool. Just, I'm specifically talking about the second time, okay. um, just seeing the representation of female athletes at the top of their game and everyone just so supportive of women athletes. Um, it was really cool to watch and very motivating yeah. um, for women everywhere, especially. For sure. Um, I think the second World Cup was more than just soccer um, being played on the field. You know, I think it was it was just pushing for female empowerment and pushing female forward and trying to, you know, put females to the front. And I think, you know, our team did a, a great job of doing that. And obviously it's taken a lot more females around the world to continue pushing that, but those boundaries. But I think, you know, the 2019 World Cup was way beyond the, the field in general and winning that World Cup. It was really, really incredible. Um, what was it like competing in the Olympics? Yeah, that was, that was amazing. I think just like the World Cup, you know, a soccer player growing up is always the World Cup. That's the pinnacle of, you know, soccer and the dream for a soccer player. And then also just, I feel like for any athlete, the Olympics is the pinnacle. And so it was amazing to be able to play in a World Cup and then the Olympics the next year and, you know, kind of reach two large goals in such a short time. Um, but I think for us, the Olympics was really hard because, it, you know, we didn't make it to Rio. Uh, for soccer, we always start and we play in different, different cities than the actual Olympic city. And so we actually were never in Rio um, we lost in the quarterfinal on penalty kicks, which is just heartbreaking. Um, so we actually never got to go and be a part of the semifinal and final, which was actually held in Rio. And so we were never in the Olympic Village or anything like that. So we were pretty isolated. Um, and sometimes it didn't feel like you were playing the Olympics because we were actually not around everyone that was competing. Um, but without that, you know, it was still a great experience. And it was it was hard because, you know, we didn't have as much success as we wanted to. And after just winning the World Cup and then trying to bounce back, that was tough in a long year, but it was pretty awesome. And to be able to say you're an Olympian is something that will always stick with me. It's pretty cool, no matter what. I mean, you're yeah. an Olympian and a two time World Cup champ. Yeah, <laughs> it's really, really incredible. Um, kind of on that note, do you have any fitness tips that you'd want to share with our community? fitness tips gosh <laughs> well like I said I feel like fitness and working out is something that just makes you feel better and you know more positive and it's a great way to like release endorphins and be happy and I think that it's important to realize all of the effects that fitness has outside of just you know, trying to actually either, you know, whatever your goal is, is to compete in something to maintain a certain uh, fitness or anything like that. I think it's important to realize that it's all about health. And I think fitness helps people stay healthy and happy and, um, and kind of it's at release. And so I think it's important those days, like I was talking about that, you don't really want to do it. And it's really tough to do it some days that you just realize what the main goal is and what you're really trying to strive for every single time. That's really important. Um, yeah. Do you have some, it's, this is kind of going back to motivation, um, but some resilience tips on bouncing back and staying true? Yeah, I think resilience, I, what I would say is mindset and resilience are probably the two top most important things, especially in my life and professional athletes life, because, you know, your mindset, and then also when something doesn't go your way and being able to bounce back and have resilience is probably the most important thing for, you know, anyone in any field. And especially because things aren't always going to go your way. And there are going to be, you know, failures in whatever you do. And I think what the most important thing is to be able to bounce back from that. And honestly, I will say every time I've had a quote unquote failure or anything like that, I've actually grown from it and it's made me better. And I think after all my failures, I've kind of reached these highest highs in my career. And so I think without those failures and without those setbacks, I guess you could say, then you wouldn't become 
the player or person or whoever you're supposed to be and where you're supposed to be if you don't have those certain moments. And I think it's super important in terms of resiliency to look at those moments in life and see it as a growth opportunity and say, okay, how can I be better from this? What's going to happen next? How can I, I can control how hard I work, um, what I do next. And so I think that's kind of the epitome of resiliency is just bouncing back and having that attitude and mindset of, especially if you can just believe in yourself. And I think that for me, that's kind of been my motto too, is every time that you have some sort of setback is the only person that's going to be able to believe in yourself wholeheartedly is you. And so for me, I've, I've kept that with me for my whole career. And I think that's kind of how you become resilient is going through those moments and then working on your mindset and continuing to stay positive with yourself. Totally. I think it's really important. Um, on that note, what does women's empowerment mean to you in 2020? <laughs> Everything. I know. I think <laughs> For me in 2000, when I, I uh, joined the U.S. Women's National Team in 2013, I really had no idea the history and everything behind, you know, the Women's National Team um, and didn't quite fully understand it and all the women that came before us that were pushing for, you know, rights and equal pay and everything uh, that they had the past, you know, 20, 30 years. And I think it's only right that every single woman around the world keeps continuing to carry the torch and, and pushing for more and, and, you know, kind of breaking the glass ceiling. And I think it's, it's so important because women have so much more to give and are brilliant people. And, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing to be able to play alongside of some, you know, change makers and people who are continuing to push the glass ceiling. And so I think it's just, it's so important, especially in this day and age for young young girls to have role models that are women, strong women that, you know, kind of continue to push boundaries and for them to be able to see that and look up to that. It's, it's so important. And I think 2019 and the world cup kind of showed that and we're obviously still pushing for more. For sure. Um, I love that. It's always empowering women. That's like Frey's biggest motto is empowering women and empowering women empowers women interchangeably. So I, couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, which um, all like in the World Cup and after that, as we, the national team empowered women, you saw other women step up to empower, you know, just it kind of a trickle effect. And I think that that was probably one of the coolest things I've seen is is how many women, you know, stand up for each other and, and continue to push each other forward and empower each other. It's kind of like a snowball effect. Yeah. Um, and you guys definitely, definitely have something to do with it. So. Thank you, genuinely. <laughs> um, so, um, well, first, I'm kind of curious how COVID has affected you and your everyday life in terms of practice, and how does that work? Yeah, it's definitely affected, <laughs> I would say, I mean, pretty much everyone, obviously, you know, around the world, and we play a sport, and so in the grand scheme of things, you know, we've kept our health and, and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's important to realize that, yes, we've been affected, but people have been affected in, in way bigger ways. And so I want to acknowledge that. But um, I do think that for us, it's been, you know, we, we had a challenge cup in Utah in a bubble for a month, and we didn't have a real, real season. And then we had a little four game uh, tournament I guess you, they called it the fall series. And so we only played about, you know, 11 something games, whatever it may be. So it's a shorter season and kind of broken up because we didn't really know what was happening. But I think this year has been just a year of where everyone's been just in flux and you kind of just have to take day by day and, and see what's going to happen because we just weren't sure. And, you know, when we were training and in quarantine from March to, to May, we had no idea what we were training for. You know, were we even training for a season? We had no idea if we were even going to be able to play this year. And so I think that was the toughest thing. And when I talk about getting up and, and not feeling the motivation of working out and, and wanting to do certain things, I think this year has probably been the hardest because for three or so months, we had to continue to work out hard and you know run to try and stay fit for possibly a season and going into a, a shortened preseason 
uh, was working, working out and not knowing what for, <laughs> you know, what was next. And I think that that was, I think the motivation piece of it was really tough. And, um, but I think at the end of the day, it's just kind of been one of those years where you just realize what the most important things are in life. And I think that's been something uh, positive. And uh, for me, I actually have been home, you know, with my husband <laughs> first time since we, you know, started dating. So I think that that's been a positive and uh, a bright spot of this year. Definitely some silver linings. I don't want to negate the hardship or any of the tragedy at, at all. Right. But there's definitely some silver linings like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, what would you like to change in the post-COVID world? The post-COVID world. Hmm. I think, like I said, I, in this year, you kind of realize what the most important things are in life. And that's, you know, family, friends, people, and uh, and time with each other and being able to hang out. And I think sometimes we took a lot of things for granted. So I think probably post COVID world <laughs> is taking that in. Uh, to if, if and when hopefully a, a lot of things turn back to normal, but not taking so many other things for granted that you know, we could do before that now we couldn't and um, in this year. So totally, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I have a couple more questions from some people that wrote in and then I think we're pretty much out of time. Um, but I think this one's kind of funny and I'm kind of excited <laughs> to hear your answer. Okay. Um, so which three of your US WNT teammates would you want to quarantine with? Uh, oh man. That is a that is a strong question because quarantine is <laughs> Or it's a long time. Out of time. <laughs> um, who would I want to quarantine with? Let's see. This is a strategic answer. Yeah, got to think strategically always. Yeah, definitely. I think a listener would be one. Okay. And then who would probably be. Mal Pugh. And then three, we'll say Lindsay Horan. All right. We love it. There okay, we go. So, I think it's great. I think it's awesome. I thought it was, it was such a funny question. I, was, I have to ask her. I know. That is a good question. Okay. I have one last one that I feel like is a good to end on. So how did you pick your jersey number? Was it for a certain reason or something special? Good question. So when I first came onto the team and you have no caps, there's you just basically get a number that's thrown to you which okay. i think 25 at first and a random number that no one else on the team had and so i i obviously didn't like that number but i think <laughs> i got to be on the team a little bit longer and um and had more caps and caps are games played and um i could choose my number a bit more <laughs> and so <laughs> i ended up choosing 14 because it was the only number under 20 that no one had. And so I uh, had 14 for a while. I really liked it, but I had been number six in college and I was six at the Houston Dash at that time. And so I was just like, I want to keep my number the same. And so I just decided to change it uh, to six when it opened up and no one else had it. So uh, I just have always liked the number six. I like even numbers under 10. And so that's kind of been my go-to. Awesome. Well, Morgan, I really appreciate your time. No um, slight logistic comment is I think on your end, you'll be the one that gets to save this. Okay. So if you could potentially just hit save, it'll probably save to your profile. I can just quickly on my end save it. And then if you want to take it down or leave it on, whatever is your end, totally fine. But I okay. know my team would love if we could get it. So once we end, it should give you a little section that you'll be able to do that. Okay. Um, if yeah, not. make sure you save it just in case I don't know how to I do know. it. I know. I'm pretty sure it gives bo both of us the option, but normally it's the host. And so okay. I just wanted to give a little caveat on that. But I really appreciate your time. I can tell you the whole Frey team is obsessed and so impressed with you. And we're so excited to have you. Thank um, you. 
on our team and an ambassador and whatever you need we're always just like a dm or a call email away perfect thank you awesome. i'm really with you guys too it's it's a great brand awesome. okay well have a great rest of your day thank you so thank much for your you time too. all my bets okay. all right bye everyone <laughs> bye <laughs>